Okay. Um, I've started the recording. Are you ready to go? Okay. Uh, well, great. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Um, again, I'm Maddie. I'm the Skype a Scientist intern for the summer, and I've been hosting the live streams. And today we're going to hear about some really cool stuff about dung beetles. So our speaker here is uh, Jorge um, George. How would you pronounce, just to make sure? The, the English version is, is, is simpler, George. But, George. but yeah, in Spanish, it's Jorge. Jorge, Jorge. Yeah. Okay. So our um, speaker today is Jorge. He is a um, dung beetle researcher. Uh, and basically, he said today he's going to tell us everything you want to know about dung beetles, but you never dared to ask about that. So. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you started researching dung beetles? Well, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm born here in in Colombia, and uh, I studied biology at the University of Los Andes many years ago. And at the at the beginning of the university, I, I went to a beautiful and amazing place in the middle of the jungle. And I begin to study this group just like a random thing. It was uh, was not my objective at, at, at that at that moment, but I begin to study this group, and I completely fall in love with dung beetles. They are amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful group. They are uh, they have a lot of colors and forms and uh, sizes and. Uh, and when you begin to study dung beetles, you begin to realize that they are very important in terms of the ecosystem services. They provide a lot of functions, and, uh, and that's why I, I begin to study more deeply this group. I do a master degree, then a PhD, uh, and, uh, and now I'm working with some students and some other researchers in different topics in different parts of the world asking uh, questions related with uh, especially the functions of the dung beetles uh, but also we are using this group as a bioindicator tool to know the impact of anthropic perturbations in different ecosystems so is is a, is a very good group in, in 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 order to give us information of the health of a lot of different ecosystems so, so this is, is an amazing group. That's cool. Um, could you quickly explain just what a bioindicator is? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, when you are working in a specific ecosystem, I don't know, like like a forest, uh, one of the one of the typical questions that any research could could have in his mind is how how conserve it's is is that forest you no know? how conserve is that ecosystem uh, he wants to know the 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 health condition of that of that forest so one one possibility is to to do a lot of work and uh, go to the field and try to understand the dynamics of the forest and try to put a lot of different traps for the different animals and try to get as much as information that he could he could understand to have a, a a complete picture of what is happening and that takes a lot of time a lot of money a lot of people working and uh, and most of the times uh, you cannot have a clear idea of what is happening so uh, many years ago a lot of researchers find that some groups especially insects are very good indicators of what is happening on those ecosystems. And the good thing is that it's very easy to work with those groups. It's very cheap. You don't need to invest a lot of time. You don't need to invest a lot of money. You can have a, a small group of, of researchers and you get a lot of information. And dung beetles is one of those groups. So you go to the field, you go to this forest that you want to know, and you put some traps, in a very short time, and you get a lot of information of what is happening on the on the on the forest. You understand if the forest is in a good condition or in a bad condition, 
if it's well conserved or is there is a problem in terms of conservation or in terms of any kind of perturbation of 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 human of human uh, uh, well related with 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 humans and in in some point no yeah okay that, that's awesome thank you um and we do have a question can you kind of tell us so like dung beetles are like how are they related to other types of beetles um and maybe describe yeah describe how like a beetle we could find in our backyard might be related to a dung beetle okay so beetles are are the biggest group of animals on earth is the most diverse uh, order so uh there are some numbers that 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 maybe some people say that for for every four species on on on, on our planet one is a beetle so that's a big number that's a very big number so uh, inside the beetles there are a lot of different families and one of those families is the escarabeide family that belongs to the true dung beetles uh, it's, it's about uh, like 8,000 species of dung beetles around the world in, uh, in every ecosystem they the the only place that you cannot find a dung beetle is mer is maybe in the in the in the poles in the very cold areas but the rest of the ecosystems you can find a dung beetle you can find a dung beetle even in the cities they are dung beetles living in urban ecosystems um, so most of them eat or are related with dung with different types of dung some of them use uh, cow dung some of them use horse dung or human dung or the dung of primates or of different animals but mostly mammals mm. cool awesome i did not know there was that many species of dung beetle let alone just it's the, the it's order a, it's of a big group. Wow. yeah 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 that's that's crazy um we do have a question about so you were talking about these different forests that you were like looking for the health of these forests with dung beetles. I was like, could you describe the kind of forest that you work in, um, that they, the dung beetles live in? Uh, I mostly work in the, in the Amazon basin region. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of the most diverse in terms of dung beetles. Even, even the dung, the, the origin of the dung beetles is Africa. The dung beetles come from, from, from Africa. And in Africa is the, the highest diversity of, of dung beetles that you could imagine. Uh, but there are a lot of, of different forces uh, that affects dung beetles, especially the, the conservation of, of, of the ecosystems. If you reduce the, the size of the ecosystems, there is a clear impact uh, in terms of the, of the diversity and the abundance of dung beetles. So we work mostly in this tropical rainforest that have different levels of pertuvency. So, so some of them are just uh, maybe cut. Some of the forests, they, they are cut. Some of the forests have like a, 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 a very interesting uh, pertuvation that is uh, hunting. In some of these areas, uh, indigenous people or hunters go and, uh, and hunt the the big mammals and this reduction in terms of the of the of the big mammals have a clear effect on the uh, diversity and abundance of the beetles wow yeah um and when you say perturbation you mean some type of stress right yeah there are there are a huge list of of possible kinds of of perturbation no it's uh, you can you can go from very small things like ecotourism. There are a couple of papers that 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 uh, just quantify the negative effect of ecotourism, and there are some. It's, it's minimal, but is there is some effect, and you can go from there from to the to the just the uh, cut of the of the whole ecosystem, all the disappearance of a big area or uh, i don't know the transformation of a forest into a 
into a grassland, no? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we, ha we do. I think it sounds like you kind of answered this question, but we do have a question about, like, how does a dung beetle, like, help the ecosystem? So the dung beetles plays a lot of a lot of a lot of functions. Uh, most the, the 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 most maybe the most uh, easy to understand is the the removal of the of the dung that all these mammals produce. So in in some areas like islands that there are no beetles, there are no dung beetles. This all this all this resource, all this excrement of the mammals is accumulated and the problem is that all that resource have a lot of nutrients have a lot of nitrogen carbon uh, phosphor a, a, a lot of important elements that plants would take and they're going to use so if this resource is not moving and there is no like a clear cycle of the of the of these elements they get lost from the ecosystem. So that's one of the most important uh, aspects that dung beetles uh, provide us, the, the recycle of these nutrients in the, in the different ecosystems. Yeah, yeah, so it sounds like if there was no dung beetles, like the, the plants are missing out on a lot of nutrients and exactly. the whole area is just not gonna be doing as well as they would with them. Yeah. And there is another another good example that are the the well the typical grasslands when you have a lot of cows a lot of cattle, and in these areas, also dung beetles play a very a very basic uh, contribution, very ba basic function that is the the cleaning the cleaning of the of the grassland. If you don't remove the dung from the surface, you lost a portion of area that the cows cannot eat the grass. So if you accumulate the dung after a couple of weeks, you just have like a cover of dung and the cows cannot, cannot feed on, on, on anything. So that's another very basic, uh, another ba basic service. Yeah, so it sounds like we really, dung beetles are very important. Moral of the story. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Um, we do have a question about, uh, kind of about the dung beetles themselves. Uh, some, Maddie, seven, she's seven, she wants to know um, what animals eat the dung beetle? So like, do wow, they have that's, a, that's, that's a big question. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, we just, we just uh, review all the information that we get, that, that, that we have of, of possible and potential predators. And we found out that mostly Every animal eats dung beetles. There are birds, there are other mammals, there are reptiles, there are amphibians, there are a lot of insects that eat dung beetles. So it's, it's, it's a group that is a, 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 a very good resource for a lot of different animals and have a very important uh, uh, role in the, in the food chain. You know? uh, Dung beetles don't have like a very strong defense. They don't, they are not, uh, they, are, they, they, they don't have like very like uh, spines or horns or, or, or things that could defense to the predators. So they're, they're very easily to, to eat them. Mostly everyone eats uh, dung beetles very, very easy. And they are very abundant. So that's a uh, like common resource in, in most of the ecosystems. Cool. Um, just for my own sake, I'm trying to envision how big would they be? Like the ones that you work with at least, because I know there's a lot. There is a huge range. So the, the, the biggest ones could be around uh, five to six centimeters, like, okay. uh, like something like this. And the small ones could be very, very small, could be less than one centimeter. So this is like a like a huge range for for beetles, no? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I was trying, I I didn't remember them being that big, but I wanted to kind of have a better picture um, and give everyone else here a better picture of like what Great. yeah, what these are. 
Um, we do have a question about, uh, do these, do, so do dung beetles travel in groups or is there like social behavior of dung beetles that you found? Uh, in dung beetles, there is no report of any kind of social interaction. There are other families of beetles that have social interaction like the pasalids. They're the ones that, that are related with, uh, with wood and they live inside the wood. So they have these semi-social uh, groups. But in dung beetles, we don't have any report of, of social interaction. Everyone, they, they form like a couple. That's the, the highest possible interaction in terms of social uh, behavior. So they form couples and some of, this, of these couples have like, like they, they are together for a long time. Other are just for the reproduction. Uh, but that's 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 it. There is no, there is no parties of dung beetles. So they don't have to work together to like move the dung around. They kind of just no. independent, do it by themselves. No, instead they 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 compete a lot. Oh. They have a, a very high competition rate. When 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 you have like this pile of of, of dungs, especially in Africa, as I told you before. Uh, there are this huge abundance of species and these huge numbers of beetles. And they arrive to these piles, especially piles of, of elephant dung, that is one of the biggest amounts of dung in Africa. And, and they compete a lot. So you, 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 can, you can find uh, different males like fighting between one to another for a dung bowl. Uh, and they are very strong fights. Like they throw it away, they push it, they, they, so, so it's, it's a lot of interaction. Wow, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't sound like maybe friendly social interaction, but no, besides no, no, just no. their mate, they don't want to be around other dung beetles. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we have, I'm trying to ask the questions in the, somewhat of the order. Um, so people are asking like how, maybe like a life cycle of dung beetles, like how are they born, yeah. kind of how that works. Maybe, maybe I put like a, like a slide. Yeah, let that me, would be great. Let me, let me check. I don't know if you, if you, you can see the, my screen. And people are also asking um, like how long do they live? So maybe that can kind of go into this too. I'm 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 sorry, but most of the slides are in Spanish, but I, I can't translate them. So so this is the normal cycle of a dung beetle. So you have like a like a very very tiny egg that the female put in the in the in the in a small amount of of dung, and then this egg uh, transforms to a larvae. Then the larvae begins to grow and becomes like a pupa, and the pupa then becomes an adult. That's the typical cycle of, of, any, of any beetle. So in this, in this cycle, most of the species uh, takes around from three to five months. Some could be longer, some could be less in time. Uh, but most of the species have like a like an annual cycle. So they they put the the females put the egg, uh, and then have all these these stages, and then become an adult, and then the adult reproduce, and then put another egg. And all this cycle takes like a year, in most of the of the areas. But there are some areas that you can find one or two or three. Uh, different uh, populations during the during the year. So it depends on the beetle. It depends on the amount of food. It depends on the temperature. Definitely, in cold areas is in in winter you cannot find dung beetles, but here in the tropics you find beetles all the year. So it depends on a lot of different things. No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. And then. I guess, like, how long do they live? Because you mentioned that they have a year cycle. Um, but are the adults dying every year? Or do they live past most, that? 
most of the species uh, just have like a life, like, like a year of life. There are some reports that some species could, be, could, could live a little bit more, mm. around two or three years. And there are so few records of some dung beetles that, that could live for four or five years. That's, that's the, the highest, uh, the highest uh, time in terms of, 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 of the possible, of the potential life of a dung beetle. Interesting. Um, is there a way to tell, like after they're past the pupa stage, is there a way to tell how old they are or? Yeah, well, the, 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 the first adults mm -hmm. are very clean and they, are, they have all their structures like very, very sharp and very uh, intact. When they begin to grow up, they begin to use all of these structures and you can, you can have a, some idea of the age of the individuals on, on, on how these structures, uh, how, how, how clean they are or how well they are. Sometimes they lose a little bit of, of, of parts of these structures mm -hmm. during the process of, of making balls and, and digging and fighting between one another. No? Okay. Cool. So then uh, their like exoskeleton kind of gets more damaged as they exactly. get older. Exactly. Oh. Yep. So that, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of cool. So if you found a dung beetle, you could kind of look at um, how damaged it might look and that might tell you how old it is. Yep. Yep. Cool. That's awesome. Um, so I'm getting a couple questions about, so I didn't know about this at all, um, about a celestial compass and how maybe beetles can use the Milky Way to navigate. Yeah, uh, could that's, you talk about that's, that? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's that's a kind uh, a, a very recent research that a group of of of, of different people works and and they do this beautiful experiments. They they was wondering how beetles uh, know where they they go. Mm -hmm. Because these these beetles that that make that makes balls, so so they they arrive to the to the dung pile and they produce like a ball and they begin to roll this ball, and in some point they put up in the ball and they like look from around. So a lot of researchers asking, well, how how these dung beetles are 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 like using any kind of, uh, of, of direction or, or any kind of indication or from the surround to, to get like the, the, the route or, or, or the way where they are rolling, no? So they make this experiment, uh, especially for, for dung beetles that, that, that do this uh, during the night. And they put like a kind, they, they, they close their like their possibility to 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 use their eyes so they put like a like a black like a black glasses something like like that and they discover that in some point these beetles are using the stars like the light of the stars to have like a guide to how to to the direction of where they are rolling so that's a, an amazing thing. It was it was a beautiful paper, like uh, I think like five or six years ago in Science, uh, discovering this that beetles in some way they are using the position of the stars and the light of the stars to follow like a map to where they are rolling the ball. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, that's awesome. It is, yeah. is completely awesome. It's like like a very tiny guy looking at the stars. It's like the most romantic thing that you could ever think about it. Um. So then, if it's I, a follow up for that, is like if it's cloudy or like they asked um how do they navigate during the day or if it's cloudy like does that yeah in, during happen? the day they they use the the light of the sun as mm -hmm. as as equal as as night um, but yeah there, there there are still some questions no as as you say when there is very cloudy what is happening mm -hmm. uh, if if they yeah. use the same things or they get lost or there are some some 
some questions that were, that that there are still not answer about that, but but uh, but in general terms, they use the the light of the sun during the day and the light of the stars during the during the night. Wow, yeah, that's really cool. I did not yeah. know that. Um, some more questions. We're getting a lot. Uh, so, what are the differences between like a female dung beetle and a male dung beetle? Like, if you found a dung beetle, could you identify that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, most of the species in dung beetles don't have any kind of dimorphism. So the, the, the male and the female are very similar in terms of color, in terms of size, in terms of, of form. So you need, to, you need to look inside of the beetle to have an idea if, 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 if it is a female or a male. No? But there are some nice dung beetles. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen again again and show okay. you some some species. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how big the larvae are in comparison to the adults. I feel like usually they're small little eggs and small larvae and pupa, but and then the adults bigger. But they yeah, all yeah. are similar in size. It looks like. So in this case, this is a, this is one of the of the most beautiful dung beetles that you could that you could find in uh, in U.S. This is a, a a species that calls Phaneus bindix. They they call it the rainbow, the rainbow dung beetle, because of the of the colors. Uh, so the one that that you see here at the at the at my left, or I don't know. Are you looking at the, the one that have like a horn is the male and this the other one is the female the female don't have horns mm -hmm. so in this species you have like a demor demorphism like sexual demorphism you can identify the male and the female in using the form and especially the horns in many species the males have horns and the females don't have horns so these horns are also used to fight between males to get females or to get the resource. So they use these horns in some species. Some of the horns are amazing. They are huge horns. Uh, and they use it for these two purposes, to, the, to fight between, between males or to, or to fight for the, for the resource. Cool. And where did you say? You said this was in the U.S. Do you know where in the U.S.? Um, most of the of the area of Texas. Okay. Yeah, this this hot area next to Mexico, this border of 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 the U.S. and Mexico. Cool. It's a beautiful, beautiful species. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it looks like iridescent almost. Um, we did have a question because some of our uh, viewers are in the U.S. Uh, they live in Virginia and they have a lot of deer in their yard and they're asking if there's maybe dung beetles out in their yard kind of dealing with the I'm, deer dung. I'm completely sure that, that, that yes. Most of, uh, of these dung beetles uh, use native dung of native species. And, uh, and the deer dung is, is a very good dung because it's... Deers have this very like this mix of of the diet that they they feed on on leaves, but they also feed on a couple of fruits, and they also feed. So it's it's a very nutrient uh, resource in terms of 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 if you compare it with uh, with the dung of a cow, that is is just is just uh, plants and is very diet like very process no there is a lot of digestion in 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 cows in deers there there are a lot of a lot of nutrients in the dung so that's that makes that resource more attractable more more interesting for dung beetles and can you describe again so when they're collecting the dung what are they what are they doing with it again or like where are they rolling the dung ball to yeah that that's that's that, that's a really interesting story. So most of the time, when you have this dung pile, the males arrive first to the dung pile. 
And especially these roller species, they get to the pile and they make like a like a roll, like like a like a ball, and they begin to roll it. And after they roll it, they produce some pheromones to attract the female. So the female arrives and he, the female kind of check the ball. So if the female like the ball and what the, what, what, what the male have, have done with the ball, the, the couple uh, begin. So, so they, there is a kind of gift that the male is doing with this ball. So, so the female say, okay, you, you make good balls or no, I don't like your ball. So the male, the, the female goes and look for another male. So when, when, the, when the couple gets and, 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 and they match together, they, the, the females go up in the ball and the male begin to roll the ball with the female. And after a couple of meters, they finally uh, put that ball inside, they dig like a, like a, like, like a tunnel and they put the dunk in, in the bottom of the, of, the, of the tunnel, and the female laid a one egg in that ball. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's the typical behavior. There are some, some other group, there are two main other groups that are the tunnelers uh, that don't make balls, they just get to the dung pile and they just dig down and make these huge tunnels. Some of these tunnels could have like one or two mit meters below the 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 soil mm -hmm. and they take some parts of the dung and they relocate this dung in these tunnels and they do the same process they they reproduce and they put eggs on this on this dung and there is a small group of beetles of dung beetles that they they are not rollers and they are not tunnelers they are dwellers, so they live inside the dung. Mm -hmm. So they make all the nest inside the dung pile. Cool. So then, just to clarify, the adults are eating it and they're laying their eggs in it. So that the, the yeah. when they grow up, they're eating it too. Yeah, the larvae eat eats the 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 resource that they that the, that their own fathers uh, put for. For 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 the for the food for for eating yeah and so they eat this because like I know you mentioned it has a lot of nutrients um, so is that is that why they're eating the dung that's just kind of like why the dung beetles are I guess exist um, so so most of the of the of the feeding is the most most of it is like the liquids on the dung. Mm. So the, the, the dung beetles are eating like all of these nutrients that are liquid. And the adults also eat part of the of the of the material of the dung, like like the like the like the plants that are in this composition in the dung. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, in the case of the of the of, of the larvae, the larvae makes like a mix of this dung that the that the, 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 the their fathers leave for it with his saliva. So he's making this mix of of these two elements and they eating like the this composition of the of this of this dung. I don't know if this answered your question. Yeah, no it does. Okay. Yeah, we were just being, uh, we had a couple questions being asked about like why did they eat dung and uh, things like that. Um, so I had but, a but in terms in terms of the of the of the evolution of the group, that is something very interesting. Mm -hmm. We we know until now that the the like the ancestor of the group was a saprophagus. So so it was a, a beetle that eat plants in this composition, and he begin he make this jump, and he begins to use the dung of dinosaurs oh. that most of these dinosaurs was were, were were eating plants so it was it was not like a big change it was like i some groups eat 
plants in this composition and some groups eat the plants in this composition that you can find in the dung of the dinosaurs. No? So, but then when dinosaurs de just disappear and all the mammals appear, the, the, these dung beetles make a big jump because the dung of the mammals is more complex than the dung of, the, of a, just an uh, 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 herbivore. No? So this, the, the dung of the mammals is more complex in terms of nutrients, in terms of, of the different groups of, uh, of kind of foods that the animals are eating. So it, it's, it's, more, it's more dung, it's more complex than, than just uh, the, the, the dung that a dinosaur could produce. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. So it's a really old group. They've kind of been the around for a really old long group. time. The very old group, yeah. Cool. Um, so I had a question earlier about, uh, so they said many insect populations are in decline. How are dung beetles doing? And like, if you would like, you could focus on a specific species, maybe the one you work with. Uh, That's yeah. a great question. Uh, most of these reports that, that we have nowadays of, of, the, of this pattern of, of insects decreasing is from Paleotic areas. Is from from Europe and from US or from Asia landscapes. There are very few uh, amount of information from the tropics. So there is like a gap in terms of, of what is happening here in the in the tropics. We we are not that sure that that pattern is completely uh, relevant here. That is that that is happening here. But, uh, but definitely we, we found that there is like a reduction in terms of the, of the areas of the ecosystems. Mm -hmm. That in some areas where you go uh, in some, some years ago and you collect a lot of species and a lot of beetles, when you go now, you, some of those species are, are not appearing. Uh, so maybe you could find some uh, local extinctions and the reduction of the abundance definitely in some in some areas, especially the the most the most uh, critical ones are the the big species. Mm. The big species of dung beetles are the ones that are being more affected for for this kind of uh, of of, in, of intervention and and perturbation because they need a lot of resource and especially because they are very connected with big mammals so one of the things that that you easily find on this forest is that the first animals that disappears are the big mammals yeah the the, the big uh, deers the big uh, bears the big uh, the big cats mm -hmm. they reduce their number they reduce their populations and when you reduce these big mammals, the big beetles are extremely affected. And in some areas, they just disappear. Wow. Yeah, so it sounds like it depends on the species, which are, some are declining, well, maybe some are doing yeah. okay, but it sounds like there's so many species of dung beetle that it's hard to really know the like general trend of how they're all doing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And 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 as you as you just mentioned, there are some species that that are doing very well with this kind of perturbations. There are some species that are very generalistic that use any kind of dung that they are really uh, strong related with uh, with cattle areas that they love these grasslands. So all this pattern of transformation from forests to grasslands are in some way there are benefit from from this and they their populations are, are are growing some some of these species also there are there are a couple of species that are invasive so mm -hmm. the the distribution area is growing up so yeah as you as you already say there it's there is not like an only trend no there is a mix of different things depends on the on the insect and, and, and on the species. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, 
I hope uh, it sounds like there's a lot of like gaps in the research that more people can go study dung beetles. Definitely. Um, so we've been having some questions about like, are dung beetles found in and then where some of our listeners are living? Uh, so so someone did ask, are they found in Maryland? And then maybe could you tell us like how could, if you were looking for dung beetles, kind of like some tips on if you wanted to find one. Yeah. So working with dung beetles is very easy because, because they, they, they are easily, easily to find. If you have cows in some area or some of some animals producing dung, it's very easy to just look at the dung, just uh, turn, turn, turn upwards and, uh, and, uh, and look in the in in the soil and uh, inside the dunk is very easy to find them. Also, collect dunk beetles is very easy. Also, you, most of these beetles you can collect it with pitfall traps. Pitfall mm -hmm. trap is a very easy trap. It's just like a, like a plastic uh, a can or a plastic uh, glass uh, that you just dig it in the soil at the at the soil surface and you can put inside of the of the of the of the pitfall any possible resource most of the time dung no like uh, like cow dung or human human dung works pretty well i don't know is is a kind of, of of funny but they 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 like a lot the the human dung especially because because we eat uh we very very our, our diet is is highly diverse so we eat a lot of different things and our digestive system is very bad so there are a lot of nutrients in in in, in human excrement so maybe maybe that's the reason that attracts so many beetles to to that resource so beautiful traps with dung with human dung are easily to do and you can find a lot of different beetles and I'm sure that in Maryland you can find a lot of them. Cool. So it sounds like if you wanted to find a dung beetle, maybe if you're hiking or in uh, your backyard or something and you find um, some type of dung, you could dig a little hole and put a little trap in and kind of just see if uh, maybe there's any beetles around. Very easy, cheap and it takes very, uh, very short time you, you you can find in 24 hours you can find the most common species in in every landscape cool yeah it sounds cool um and we do have a question some questions about just the beetles and kind of and which i'm assuming there's some variable answers just depending on species um but asking like do how do they find shelter and maybe do they swim if they're near water uh, most of the species, when they when they when they are not interacting with uh, the resource, they just dig a very small tunnel and they just put it inside uh, the soil, uh, just for if 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 it's very cold or if if it's, if the active if they are active during the day, they do that during the night or if they are active during the night they do that during the day and uh, i don't have any idea if there are good swimmers i i, I suppose that no uh, there are most of the of the of the structure of the beetles this exoskeleton is uh, is uh, waterproof so so not because they swim because they are not they they don't they don't live and they are not uh related with water at any point they are terrestrial insects uh but if they fell to a river or to a pond or to a lake or whatever mm -hmm. they can they can easily go out uh, like moving you no know, trying to fly or try to move probably they are not going down or like like uh but i'm i'm, I'm, I'm not sure i'm just speculating here and they're not but the, 
it's possible like a good experiment like put some dung beetles in water and what and see what 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 they could do yeah that would be cool i'm imagining um like a little tub or something maybe if you can catch some dung beetles you can see if they can swim uh um, yeah why not yeah because i was um we did have a question about like how do they roll the dung and they use their back legs right yeah, there are there are like two different strategies, and most of the rollers they go backwards. So so they put the 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 the, the back legs in the bowl. That's why the back the back legs are are a little bit bigger. Mm. So they just put it uh, back and they begin to to push it with the with the front legs. Uh, it's funny. It's funny because if 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 you think that's not the easiest way uh, because you are not looking of, of, of where where are you going no that's that's why they 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 roll and they stop and they go up to the ball and have a look and they go down and continue rolling no but there is a, a, a few uh, a very small group in South America especially in Chile and in Argentina in the in the dry areas from a tribe that calls Ukranini. It's, it's a very small tribe inside the dung beetles. And this tribe, they, they roll uh, not backwards, just they, they have these legs in, the, in their front legs and sometimes like structures on the head that they use it to grab the dung and they grab it with their front legs and with the head and they, they just put it up and begin to walk with the with the dunk. Uh, so it's it's another different strategy, completely apart from the from the rolling. This is more like uh, like That's carrying or yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Um, yeah, because yeah, I was thinking, if you have to push the dung with your back legs, you might not be a great swimmer because you kind of would need. But I wonder if the ones that are carrying it have stronger front limbs, maybe. Yeah, there is there is a completely different morphological uh, structures. If you if you if, if if you are a carrier or you are like a like a roller. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so we did get a question. Can you? So it says, well, do you have a pet dung beetle, or can you even have dung beetles as pets? Yeah, yeah. In some in some countries, especially in Asia and uh, in Japan. That's that's one of the countries that have more more crazy people about dung beetles and and beetles are as 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 pets. There are some some beetles that that people regularly use uh, and have in their homes as as pets. There are also these amazing bars where people can uh, put money against beetles that are fighting. So is well. Japan is like a crazy, a crazy place for a lot of crazy things, and um, and one of one one of the of the of the most amazing thing is that they 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 just uh, put compete beetles like two males for competing for a female, or beetles running and which beetle is more fast than the other one, and uh, and people that having pets, the dung beetles as 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 pet is is maybe is 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 an easy pet in terms of of uh, of of taking care. The only disadvantage is that you need to put a dung. So maybe the smell in your house of dung is not is not that good. But but a part of that could be a lovely pet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if there's any uh, kids watching. I don't know if the parents would like um, dung to be in the house. So maybe keep yeah, maybe ha keep the dung beetles in the backyard if your parents don't want you to have a pet dung beetle. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, we did have a question just to kind of clarify on the relationships between between specific dung beetles and like specific types of dung. So you mentioned they usually choose mammals, but are there specific dung beetles that like carnivores versus herbivores or do they yeah help that's herbs? that's a very interesting question and we we have a lot of information on that topic and uh, as, as as i told you before most of the dung beetles are generalists 
So, so they can use any kind of dung. And, um, and in the field, they, they use the, the, the first dung that they could find. You know? there, is, there are some species that are really very, very, very generalistic in, in, in what they, they feed on. Mm. But there are a lot of species that are the other extreme, you know, that, that they use a very specific dung. So in some experiments that we that that that, that we did in 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 the Amazon region in in, in Colombia, we put different kinds and different types of dung and in this in this pitfall traps, and we found found that that some species are more attracted to some of the of the of the different types of dung. Um, so there are species that only arrive to one kind of dung, and especially the primates it seems like there are very specific species that are related to very specific species of primates and also there are a couple of amazing reports there are a couple of, of amazing reports in in one species of primate and in a species of a slot so there are some dung beetles that are highly specialize on these primates so they live they they live grab on the on the on the on the primate they're living near the the anus area of the primate waiting for the primate to produce dung and when the primate produces dung they just make like a like a like a small jump and they jump to the to the dung of the primate so they live with the primate. They live just in the in the in the hair of the of the primate, uh, waiting for the for the primate to go to the to the loo. No, uh, and there is also another species that lives with uh, with the sluts. So uh, so it's it's the same. They just wait until until the animal go down to the floor, and when the animal go down down to the floor and produce dung. They just jump directly to the to the to the to the to the dung. So you have a, a huge range. You no, know? you have generalistic species and some degrees in the middle, and very specific species that only use a very specific uh, type of resort. Yeah! Wow, that's cool. I did not know that. <laughs> um, so we have a couple more questions because we're starting right. to wrap up. Um, so you again, just uh, do they so do they watch over their larva because you mentioned they lay the eggs in the dung, but do they just then leave and go look for more resources or? Now, also you have a, a, a huge range of of different kinds of behavior. Most of the species uh, make these couples just to reproduction. So they, the female and the male make a couple and they reproduce and the males goes away. And the females stay, leaves one or two or three eggs in the, in the dunk and the female just uh, also leave the dunk. That's the most common behavior. There is also a kind of, uh, of, of, kind of uh, parental uh, taking care of the of the of the offsprings. So in some in some species, you can find that the 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 male and the female stay longer and take care of the bolts. So they they take care that the bolts don't get uh, any kind of fungi or any kind of nematodes or other things or predators. And in some species, very few species, you have the 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 opposite uh, behavior. That is that the female stay with the with the offspring, stay with the egg, uh, taking care of the egg, and the female die taking care of the egg. Um, just a couple of days before the egg becomes an a new adult. Mm -hmm. So you have all this range of 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 potential parental care in 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 this group. Wow, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um 
So then, okay, so we've gotten, a, this is our last question, I think. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions about, like, where, yeah, where are these dung beetles? And you mentioned that they don't super like it cold, but they're basically everywhere but the poles, correct? Yep. So I guess, um, I think a question that kind of encompasses a lot of these uh, questions is, if, how, like, how, how do dung beetles look maybe different from regular beetles? Um, like if you have any pictures that you could show and then how, yeah. Um, yeah, like how can people find, like when they find a beetle, how do they know it's a dung beetle? Well, there, there are a lot of, of, uh, of different types of, 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 of dung beetles. Uh, most of them, I'm gonna make you like this, maybe this one, yeah. Oh, wow. So they have a lot of different forms and colors. Most of them are a little bit like black or brown, uh, but some of them have beautiful colors. Some of them are green, some of them are like this metallic combination of colors. Uh, some of them have very long legs, some, some others are more rounded. Uh, there is a huge diversity in terms of dung beetles. As, 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 uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have more than 8,000 species and they are related with very different ecosystems, with very different areas. You can find it in, in mountains, in forests, in the jungle, in grasslands, in desert areas. So they, there is, well, all of them have like this kind of oval form, mm -hmm. uh, all of them have a special kind of antenna. So, so the, 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 the form of the, of, the, of the antenna, I don't know if you can, you can maybe look one of these ones, like the, the form of the antenna is very typical in this group. It's one of those, if, 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 if it's one of the main characters in terms of the morphology of the group that identifies the family. Uh, all of them have like this structure in front of the head that is the clipius that helps for digging. So uh, there are some kind of things that you could you can have a look and say, well, maybe it could be a dung beetle. But I think the easiest way is where you can find it. If you find it in the dunk, most of the species that you find in the dunk are going to be dunk beetles. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, this helps. I think this helps a lot. So if people are interested in looking for dung beetles, they kind of have that round body with a short little antenna and pretty like strong uh, back legs. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I'm assuming there's probably less species where it's colder, but maybe yeah. and more when it's warmer. Okay. Yeah. As I told you, the, the, in, 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 in the tropics, you find a lot of them. And in Africa, is like the, the peak of, in terms of diversity and in terms of abundance. That's awesome. Yeah, so I guess if, anyone, um, if anyone's looking for dung beetles, feel free to like, message us or tweet at us uh, for Skype a Scientist. We'd be interested to see um, where you all where are finding them. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave you my, my, um, my email. That would be great. If anyone have any question or any, or I don't know if it's interested in dunk beetles or want to have a look of some pictures or maybe could have some pictures of them in the backyard and they want to know if there are dunk beetles. Yeah. There is my email. There is also my Instagram. If, if there are, some questions or whatever, I'm more than happy to, to answer any of those. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and this is, this is recorded and will also go on YouTube. So anyone else in the future that's interested in learning about dung beetles can find your information too. Excellent, amazing. Well, cool, yeah, so we're wrapping up. We're gonna go a little bit over because I have the three kind of questions that all speakers uh, get at the end of our live streams. Um, so if anyone has to run off to something, that's totally okay. Uh, thank you all for coming if you do have to run off. Um, but our first question is, is there anything that you wish that you were asked about?
I think there are a lot of different questions. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Some some of them really good ones. Some some, some of them make me make me think a lot. So I think they uh, they question a lot of different topics and a lot of different range. And awesome. Yeah, I think we had some great questions too. Um, yeah. So is there some? So the second question is: uh, Is there something that you wish that everyone knew about dung beetles? Like you could tell the whole world, like yeah. this is something about dung beetles. I think I think the 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 the, the takeaway message of uh, of 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 this of this uh, short talk mm -hmm. must be like dung beetles is one of the most important groups in terms of ecosystem services. They play a huge range of functions, and if they were not in 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 those ecosystems there will be a lot of, of issues, a lot of big problems. So, so they, they do a lot of important things and all that work that they are doing is completely free. We don't, we don't need to pay them for, for what they are doing. Uh, so so it's, it's a very important group and a value group. So every time that you find a beetle or find a, a, a dung beetle in your backyard, just say thanks. I think that, that that's kind of the theme of a lot of like insects, right? Is they do, there's so many and they do so much work, but a lot of people yeah, don't exactly. realize like how exactly. much that they're doing. Like 8,000 exactly. dung beetle species is what you, that's amazing, that's so many. Um, and the last question is, so is there something that you wish that everyone knew about any topic of your choice? About like dung beetles or anything. It can be any kind of like, maybe like a favorite fun fact that you have, anything that you think is really cool that you wish everyone could know about any topic of your choice. Uh, <laughs> you dung beetles too. <laughs> yeah, well, in dung beetles, I think one one of the of the of the most of the most curious thing is the 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 amount of of weight of these balls that they could roll. No, that's one of the of the most uh, amazing uh, like like curious things. One of these balls could 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 be around around. Uh, uh, more than more than one kilogram and these beetles are moving like more than 100 times their own weight with these balls so that's like what some people say that is one of the of the strongest insects on earth moving these huge balls uh, and 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 doing their their job no yeah yeah, I guess um, I'm trying to picture what would what would that be in relation to like what humans would move. So if we were like dung beetle strength, what could we move? I don't know, like a boss, something like that. You, know? like <laughs> you can push like a, a whole boss with your with your hands. Like yeah, cool. Well, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm thank you for coming and chatting with us about. Oh, no, this is amazing. It's amazing. I love to be here. I hope that everyone learn something new and uh, they thank you for all of all of you to be here and for the great questions and uh, i'm very happy to to be part of this yeah yeah thank you so much and yeah again thank you for everyone attending um i hope you enjoyed it and remember to check out uh the live stream page on our website for the talks coming up uh, next week i don't believe we do have a talk but the week after that we're gonna have two live streams so stay tuned and uh, thank you again, Jorge, for coming and chatting with us, answering all of our questions we never dared to ask about dung beetles. A pleasure, a pleasure. Thanks to you. Thank you. Well, great. Thank you so much. And thanks, Aaron, for doing the um, translating for us. All right. Bye, everyone.